Hi there, my name is Philip Heidson. I want to welcome you to the Art of Procurement podcast, the podcast that helps you, a forward-thinking procurement professional, position yourself and your team to proactively take advantage of the revolution that's taking place in procurement today. By interviewing industry trailblazers and sharing insights from our own experiences, my team and I pull back the curtain and shine a light on the strategies, tactics, and tools that procurement teams are using to elevate their impact. And today on the show, I welcome my good friend, Matthias Guzman, the founder of Digital Procurement World. And as you will hear in the show, Matthias got his start in event production and management, hosting sporting events on the ATP Tour, which is the Association of Tennis Professionals Tour, by hosting beach soccer tournaments and supporting the FIFA World Cup in Germany in 2006. Subsequent opportunities working in procurement event production, and then as a startup company marketer, provided the backdrop to found Digital Procurement World in 2019. And it's certainly an event that has created a lot of buzz across the procurement event scene since. Now, in our conversation, we discussed Matthias' background and the opportunities that he saw that led him to found DPW. We also talk about how DPW is now helping procurement teams in their procurement tech innovation journeys beyond the events through DPW Scout Lab. Now, this is a conversation I really enjoyed, and I started, as usual, by asking Matthias if he found procurement or if procurement found him. I found procurement. Yeah. Probably as most people, right, in our industry. Uh, so I randomly got into procurement in 2000 and end of 2005, I believe it was. I was living in London. I was working actually in sports marketing, sports management, mm-hmm. left the job. Um, and then, um, you know, put up my resume on one of those uh, recruitment websites. I think it was monster.co.uk or so. And got a call from Alex Martinez, uh, one of the mm-hmm. founders of Procurement Leaders. Um, and uh, he invited me to a um, to an interview as they were looking, uh, you know, to grow procure, uh, European leaders in procurement, actually, they were called back in the days. And they just started off having their first event in 2005 or four, you know, was a success. And then they look, were looking to expand. They were looking for someone to, who speaks German and Spanish and who could mm-hmm. really, you know, um, you know, launch their main European event from the delegate sales perspective. And so yeah, I never heard anything about procurement before. So it was uh, also like, you know, what's procurement? So, but anyway, had the interview with Mark, Alex and Richard, the three founders and, and then, yeah, started my first job really, if you like my second job after I left the first one, um, in procurement with, with European leaders in procurement back then, um, running delegate sales for, for the company. And, um, yeah, so that's, that's really how I got into procurement really randomly. And, and your background before that, I know we talked off mic, it's kind of interesting from a sports marketing perspective. You worked for some pretty prestigious organizations before you made the jump into procurement. Yeah, so I, um, I people probably can tell by my, by my accent, I'm German, but I grew up in Germany and I played tennis um, mm-hmm. for a long time and uh, I always wanted to stay in the, in the sports industry. Really, uh, you know, worked work there. So really studied, studied in that field and, you know, went to Spain uh, for a scholarship. I worked then for the ATP uh, running of one of the biggest tournaments in Barcelona and Spain. Then got into Octagon, um, you know, big sports marketing company, biggest competitor of IMG, if someone's familiar with the, with the sports industry. Um, and uh, was working for them in the, in the beach soccer division. But look, as, as life always happens, right? Life is random and you have to uh, go for opportunities. And, and you know, some coincidence uh, was that I landed in procurement. Leaders. So obviously a really interesting background that you brought to procurement. You worked in the procurement event space um, for a while. Um, was, what was it, three years ago now that you started DPW, maybe four years ago? Um, what was kind of the, the gap in the market that you thought, you know what, I'm going to try and put everything that I've got online and, um, and start this different events business? Yeah, good question. Um, I found a DPW in 2019, mm-hmm. um, but maybe a step before, I mean, when I was working at procurement leaders, um, I was starting off in delegate sales, then I was, uh, you know, setting sponsorship packages. Then I was selling at one point um, after we launched a, a membership subscription-based model, uh, membership sales. I ran marketing, I ran events, 
uh, all out of London. And then I went to uh, the US. I moved to the US for procurement leaders to launch the Americas business. Um, and that's where I also launched big major events for procurement leaders, from, but also from small roundtable events to the Americas Congress, which yeah. um, maybe some of you now um, is now their flagship event in North America. So I went through all those different divisions and areas of the business that really skilled me up nicely to maybe do something in a similar space. But, you know, then after I left procurement leaders, I, I worked for Visible, uh, a startup in procurement uh, mm -hmm. founded also by Mark Pereira, who's one of the founders of procurement leaders too. So he, you know, brought me into Visible, and and I wanted to showcase Visible at ProcureCon uh, in Philadelphia, um, and they were charging me the same amount of money they charged for a, a big tech mature, uh, well positioned, established provider, and you know those sponsorship packages is not affordable for us as a startup, right? And so, you know. So we can afford it and we couldn't, uh, you know, showcase visible there, uh, despite having a, an amazing technology, but also really a new know how and new thinking that we could you know, that mm -hmm. we're bringing to the to the industry. And so that's really where I saw the gap, right, that events and procurement uh, didn't make it easy, affordable for startups to get involved. And back then in 2018, or when it was, uh, there were a lot of startup festivals already in the world, right? Um, but procurement, there was nothing there. So laying behind is as normal. Um, you know, there was a need, I guess, for for the industry to connect better with startups. So I said to Mark, look, I have to leave Visible because the world needs DPW. And yeah, I mean, that's how I really came up with the idea. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. to you know make bring startups into procurement, but also create a new type of diverse ecosystem that I believe is needed as procurement. Uh, you know, is tasked for higher purpose now with driving value beyond savings, yeah. uh, you name it, sustainability, diversity, uh, external innovation. So that was, um, you know, really the basis um, of, of, yeah, I mean, building a, a new type of diverse ecosystem that not only brings together the incumbent and the practitioner, but also the startups, the investors, uh, the business and the suppliers. So I think the world is changing. You know, and and also because of technology, um, you know, there's a need of of a yeah of a new group of players coming together to tackle procurement challenges. So it's really around the notion that procurement has been too siloed uh, back then, and we need to break procurement out of its silo to help them mm -hmm. play a bigger role in the company. So I think that lack of diversity that I've seen in the industry across events and communities was a trigger for me to do it, but then also out of my own need at Visible, um, you know, realizing there was a, a lack of, of events. I mean, then also maybe the last point, Phil, is, you know, to a lot of procurement events, as you probably have to, and I always thought, well, it's always the same old people speaking there, right? Always the yeah. people who want to be, be, be on stage talking about the same old stuff. And, and there was, you know, there was not, in my opinion, enough inspiration at events. It's always the same old stuff. Um, and it just didn't really move the needle anymore, I thought. So there was a need uh, for, I believe, a better content, uh, more cutting edge content. Mm -hmm. And I think that comes from the procurement community on one side, but also from the outside in, right? So we need to bring, um, I think, uh, the, the C-level speakers outside of procurement onto the stage. Uh, to inspire us. So, you know, a couple of problems that I saw. So I went out to uh, tackle them myself by founding DPW in 2018. We, we definitely aligned on bringing more outside content into procurement. It's funny, when I started out of procurement, which is now uh, just over seven years ago, um, you know, it started it was how can I showcase some of the content that's happening at events to folks who don't have the opportunity to go to those events, you know, those conferences. Um, but then as you evolve, you realize we need some more kind of cutting edge thinking. How can we bring different thoughts into the community? And, and we're a big believer in going outside and bringing ideas in. You know, most things in the world have already been tried somewhere. It's just kind of finding them and then inspiring people to, uh, to do the same. Um, and I don't think we do a good enough job yet as a profession of looking outside of our profession for ideas. 
Yeah, it's you know, you know, I think it's about rolling up your sleeve as a producer, right? And mm -hmm. and not going for those low hanging fruit, the same old speakers, and, and really um, see where the great stories are. And that takes a little bit of um, ambition, I guess, on one side. On the other side, it takes a little bit of understanding the challenges in procurement. So you need to have producers in place and have a bit of an understanding of, of the topics and challenges and then you know match them with potential speakers. The other thing is which allowed me to do that is by having only one event. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that's how I launch as a conference, having only one event and being able to work on that, obviously with less resources, maybe than other events, uh, you know, organizers, event um, players out there. Um, but having that one event allowed me to really look and for, for 12 months uh, build up the event and look for the great speakers and the best speakers. And it takes time to find those good speakers, yeah. right? It takes time to speak to them, to qualify them and to really create and connect them with the with the agenda that you want to build. If you look at some of those big event players out there, they have a lot of events per year. And and basically those events are commoditized, right? They yeah. uh, they give them a different title, a bit of a different colored colored logo. But in the end, it's it's really um, you know a, a package that they push out and they sell. And uh, you know that's, that there's a lot of differentiation between those events. Uh, I feel sometimes. Um, so I guess yeah, building a new type of event as you know I said I was to do takes time and a lot of work and yeah sometimes um, that's not being achievable right and in, in the current setup of of other companies out there yeah now one of the things you know i i talk to folks who go to all different events i go to a lot of different events as well and you know one of the things that people have said to me in feedback from dpw is it's it's kind of an a, event rather than a conference if that makes sense it's like you didn't set out for it to just be the same conference as everybody else with just a little bit of you know a different spin or some different speakers could you talk about you know what do you, what do you have tried to achieve in in the kind of the dpw experience if you will yeah i mean experience was always i think the starting point right for me to think because having run a lot of other events for other companies in the past i thought okay what's the new experience I can bring to the industry and it's really the experience I, I think about um, all the time um, well first of all bringing together a, a new diverse a more diverse group of of different people different groups right be it uh, you know different jobs different functions different age groups young talent itself changed completely the dynamic and the feel and the the energy that you you have at a conference. So just focusing on that, which is focus on the people that you bring together. I mean, will will really change uh, how you how you experience the event. Um, mm -hmm. Then uh, that's one thing. The other thing is I always look at the venue, right? As venue yeah. is something is very important. I always stay away from hotels. Uh, we went into the Börse on Berlach, which is a monumental former stock exchange building in Amsterdam. Uh, which is just a very impressive venue. I think it's still a venue where you go in, actually it's all there, AV and catering. The future of, of the conference will be even more customization, building everything from the from the ground up. It's a completely, completely customized uh, event to give it a really, you know, a, a DPW branding and an experience that's even more unique. So mm -hmm. so that's that's one thing. And and you know, I I you know. I make a big thing uh, out of my dress code, which is startup casual at DPW, not business casual. So it's really a new dress code. Uh, and then we, we focus a lot on networking, right? I mean, again, I guess there are a lot of other events as well, but networking is definitely king, especially after the pandemic. Uh, you could tell mm -hmm. that in, at this year's event, people were craving to go back in person. And we use Brella, one of the best networking tools, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of side events at the conference. We had a massive opening party at the supper club in Amsterdam. So yeah, focusing on networking, I believe, um, is, 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 is key as well. And that's something we focus on. Yeah, I think, I mean, those are just some examples of, of how I think. And then obviously we had digital procurement event. And so we like to bring the best technology into the, 
into the conference um, to enhance the experience. And how do you manage? So you talked right at the beginning about um, you know a gap in the market was around startups, and you know there's been an explosion in startups even since 2019 when you had your first event. Um, you know how do you create a stage for those startups to shine? You know mm -hmm. in an environment where it's tr tr it's tr uh, traditionally been difficult for them to do so. You know at a typical event. Yeah, so um, obviously that was my mission, really, to put the startups into the spotlight. Again, as a, as a conference, you know, you have to understand that DPW, our annual conference, is a tech event, right? I mean, yeah. we are niche. We are focusing on digital and technology. I think that also is what the providers love, by the way, uh, around the conference. And the people coming to the conference are seniors, chief procurement officers, but also the heads of digital, the heads of center of excellence. So they're actually coming to to see the best new technologies out there. They're a bit in buying mode, if you like. And and, and so I think it's just a win win for everyone. Um, you know, one of the things we do at the conference, um, but even outside of the conference is we run startup competitions and pitch mm -hmm. sessions, if you like. So we run more, which is one of an annual startup pitch competition that we host every year starting uh, typically around March and then the big grand finale uh, will be at the conference in Amsterdam. So, you know, we have that that stage for the startups. It's free to attend for them and it's really, yeah, a competition. And we have different tracks. In the past, we had different topical tracks. This year, we only focused on the growth on the stage of the company. So we had an early stage track and a growth stage track. Early stage is up to 1 million in, in annual recurring revenue. And then growth stage is up to 10 million, between 1 and 10 million. So, and then at the conference itself, beyond the demo event, we also have, um, you know, spotlight sessions. So this year we had, I think, 22 startups that went onto the stage for three minutes each, just explaining who they are, why they exist, yeah. and how their technology is really changing procurement. So, and it, they're all free, right? Those are, you know, short, snappy speaking slots, but I like to say don't underestimate, uh, you know, three minutes on the main stage, which yeah. also is actually live streamed virtually. So wherever I can, I give, you know, you know, give, give, you know, bring, bring startups onto the big stage. So the focus will be more on the to bring the startup perspective onto the stage. And I think that was one of the feedback from the attendees, you know, have more have more sessions with startup founders. I mean, that's where the inspiration is taking place, right? And, um, you know, that's, that's what we want to support as well. And for the startups, it's a tremendous opportunity. Like you say, don't underestimate that three minutes because um, it's so hard for them to get their name and to get their value proposition out there, especially in the traditional uh, circuit because of the cost barriers that you talked about before yeah exactly um on the other side i must say we also had startups now um in 2019 and and you're right there were there were startups out there but you know and you know compared to today you know three yeah. years later i mean there has been just this explosion of startups yeah. coming through which is exciting right i'm not saying they're all great but you know a lot of them are great and uh, a few of them that I met in 2019 have disappeared too, right? Mm -hmm. So it's been an interesting space to watch. Um, some of the startups from 2019 have grown up, right? And, mm -hmm. and you know, have, have really, you know, you know, been become companies, if you like. And then you also have startups uh, that are, have a lot of funding. So a lot of startups even this year have gone from a startup package to the more um, you know pricey premium sponsorship yeah. packages scout b they were a platinum sponsor so they made a big investment in the conference globality as well i mean a platinum sponsor right so we have bender just received 100 million in funding right they went uh, for gold sponsorship packages and they they sponsored the opening party so that's great to see right that the startups are you know, investing into into those yeah. events and into DPW and um, yeah, have grown up uh, compared uh, some of them compared to 2019, right? And have really um, got got traction. So, um, you know, one of the things that happens whenever you bring 
a community of folks together like you've done at DPW is that presents opportunities for you to help that community in different ways, you know, in other ways, maybe even ways that you didn't first envisage when, you know, you wanted to kind of um, uh, bring people together around an idea or an event. Um, and something that I've seen from the outside that I'd love to just know a little bit more about is Scout Lab. I think you kind of referred to it a, a moment ago in terms of, um, you know, pitch competitions and helping folks find, uh, you know, navigate their way amongst this explosion in, in startups. But could you explain a little bit more about what Scout Lab is and how that kind of grew out of DPW? Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, Scout Lab is, is really um, a program that we launched in 2020. And how it came about was quite um, you know, interesting, quite kind of um, maybe unusual. But I think the, um, the the idea around the conference is all it's all around inspiration, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, for people to show people, you know, the possible and the art of the possible. Now that's all great, but so what, right? And then yeah. you know, what, what's the next thing? Uh, ideally, now you want to bring those startup, uh, you know, solutions into so go from impact in those companies by connecting them with the best new technologies out there um so in 2020 after i got hit by the pandemic and i hit rock bottom and didn't have anything i got approached by uh, peter paul von erle and herman knievel um and you probably don't know them but you know peter paul uh was the former head of innovation at Accenture Netherlands, and mm -hmm. uh, Herman was the global head of open innovation at ISS, a, a big facilities management company out of Denmark. And so they came to me and say, "Look, you know, we've seen your conference in Amsterdam. It's amazing. It's it's spot on, and we can actually now help you bring those technologies into large companies. We have really great experience and, and long experience with." The whole corporate startup collaboration uh, equation if you like and uh with with the scouting of technologies outside of procurement so they've done a lot of um you know scouting projects um mm -hmm. outside of procurement for big companies to so say why don't we do this now with you together in procurement so we co-founded scout lab which in a nutshell is uh yeah a scouting and scaling or open innovation uh um, you know, program for for large procurement organizations or for large organizations. So we we help them basically, and if you like, in, in uh, two or three areas. But you know, one of them is is really we help procurement organizations uh, transform digitally um, by helping them find and scale the best new technologies in procurement. Uh, we also help um, you know the business. Um, you know, help find new technologies um, yeah. for their companies. So, you know, typically that goes through procurement because we say procurement should be the trend scout of our companies today, um, you know, considering the position of a company. But we also help them with sustainability technologies as well. Uh, we're tapping that into that more and more. So, you know, we launched a program. We got Rush on board pretty fast uh, as our first customer. And we help Rush with, I think, eight or nine challenges uh, as of today from you know helping them find an SRM solution to a you know data analytics solution to a project uh, management solution or resource planning solution so you know you name them there are different technology challenges mm -hmm. out there and we help companies uh, tackle them and solve them by connecting them with uh, solutions that can help them to do so so but even before you know we are now also expanding that program and become also more of advisors in that space so we are now not only helping them with the scouting and the shortlisting and long listing of solutions um, but also with a one step before how they should go about when it comes to the scouting program mm -hmm. and you know how they should prioritize challenges uh, what new ways of working they should bring in uh, to you know to make it uh, to make it work to make digital work um, so for Johnson & Johnson, for example, they launched the, the procurement garage, similar to so what BT Source has done. Yeah. It's a standalone unit within procurement. And so we, we help them setting this up and then also helping them with the scouting and piloting of their, the, their solutions that they want to bring in. So, yeah, I mean, and, and we do the scouting in a very fast, agile way, if you like. And, uh, you know, scouting projects go, you know, to a maximum, like three to four weeks. 
um, and, and that's made the program successful. It's the speed that we, you know, where we find companies, um, and then. Um, yeah, and, and the success to it has been outstanding so far. Well, you have the expertise. You know, you you sit, sat through all these pitches. Um, you know these companies. And to be honest, I see that as being a really big need for organizations now is the overwhelm. You know, there are so many we talked a couple of times about even the explosion in startups from 2018, 2019 to here in 2022. And so I think that that overwhelm stops people from getting started because you just don't really know where to start or don't necessarily know how to determine or to, you know, what are the flags to look for on whether an organization is kind of here built to last, if you know what I mean, versus mm -hmm. ones that, as you said, were here in 2019, not here in 2022. Um, so uh, I definitely see the value in, in doing that. And the fact that you already have all that insight means you can do it a lot faster because you can pretty quickly ascertain here's the scope or this is maybe not even scope this is the outcomes we're wanting to drive and know who are the right people that can help them get those outcomes yeah no exactly um no it's definitely overwhelming you know the amount of solutions that are coming through in procurement um and so obviously we help them right um if you like um you know, bring a structure into into that as well, um, mm -hmm. but also connecting them with great solutions, but also with the founders, right? I yeah. think we're also looking at the founders beyond just just looking at the solution, also looking at, at the team and the inspiration that the founders can bring in. Um, you know, in the end is a is a co creation approach that we are also um, you know promoting and. There's been a, a lot of great partnerships coming out of the Scout Lab, so it's really, you know, you know, I guess a request for partnership um, more than a request for proposal yeah. that we are promoting here with the con with the with the Scout Lab program. But no, I mean that that's exciting, right? And I mean, there's so much uh, startups now coming through, and you know, I think you know, it's alarming, right? I mean, if you look at in the past. We talked about, you know, uh, you know about the, about the core, um, typically ERP, and 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 now it's all around around the startups. And I think, if you like, it's it's really the startups which is now the new core, right? Or the the experience yeah. uh, layer above above the core of the traditional core that we now I believe should focus on. Now it's not about either or, right? It's not about replacing the core no. now with startups. Or you can't run a company solely on startup solutions, right? But it's really how how you marry both, how you bring both together. Um, the good thing with the startups is they have solutions that do specific things much better, maybe than you know speed providers on one side. But on the other side, once you bring them in, they also create a, a problem on, on on somewhere else, right? So it's it's really how how do you bring that complexity of all these American startups into a um, into a digital architecture um, that that works in the end, right? And that's being used by the business. Yeah, and you know some of the fastest growing startups that I see are ones that are, like you say, they're not replacing suites and legacy tools necessarily, but plugging gaps or being the glue that un that brings you know different tools and different suites all together. So you don't, as you say, need to just throw out the old and bring in the new. It's how can you have the, everybody kind of work together in a way that, um, um, you know, that brings better value out of what you already have if you already have a tech stack. Yeah, exactly. Well, you see also the suite providers are opening up, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, with SAP, with the SAP Foundry now trying to invest and connect startups and bring them into their ecosystem. I think it's an exciting space now. So it's around coexisting together, I guess, rather than competing with each other and um, yeah, make it work. But uh, I think yeah, that's an interesting um, space to watch. Yeah, certainly. So so let's start uh, to wrap up. I do have one question um, and for next year, 2023. What's the save the date? Have you got your dates planned? for uh, DBW 2023 yeah. yet? Yeah, so we are going to uh, have DBW 2023 again in Amsterdam at the Börsenberlache uh, for another year, October 11th 
and 12 um, okay. other dates for next year. And then, and then we are, you know, looking at 2024 for our first US event, mm -hmm. um, which is going to so be really uh, branching out into into another region now um, with with the conference. Yeah. So more to come on that one, uh, I'm sure, kind of over the the forthcoming months. Um, to wrap up, question that I always ask, and I always say it's the easy question uh, at the end. If people who've listened today who are interested in learning more about DPW, if they're interested in learning or connecting directly with you for any reason, where's the best places for them to find you? They can find us on social media. We are strong on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. We're using LinkedIn as our, almost like on mark, uh, you know, key marketing tool, but uh, platform really. But yeah, follow us on LinkedIn. I would say DPW Digital Procurement World on there. If someone wants to speak to me directly and personally, my email address is Matthias at dpw.ai. Yep. And we also currently rebuilding our website. So I, I rather don't want to give out our website URL, which is actually dpw.ai too, yeah. um, but it redirects to the conference page. So, you know, the, the, our online presence will, will change uh, quite a yeah. lot in the next couple of months. But I think Matthias at dpw.ai, always okay. happy to chat. Perfect. And I'll, I'll link up to um, your LinkedIn profile on the show notes as well. If folks who are listening and want to go and find that, all of our show notes for all of our episodes are at artofprocurement.com slash podcast. That's artofprocurement.com slash podcast. Matthias, I want to thank you once again for joining me on the show today. If this episode struck a chord with you, please do send it to somebody. We grow here at Art of Procurement through word of mouth, and that would be really appreciated. You can also support us by giving us a thumbs up, a star rating, or a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. Since 2015, we've built the world's largest free resource for procurement professionals looking to elevate their impact. Our resources span podcasts like this, videos, blog posts, papers, and events. To join us on the inside and to ensure you never miss an episode, a webinar, an event, or a post, please do subscribe to our weekly newsletter, This Week in Procurement. You can do that at artofprocurement.com slash subscribe. That's artofprocurement.com slash subscribe. Thank you for joining us today, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.